we want to go undefeated again. I think we can. We have a great, strong group coming back. And uh, we got our feet wet last year, so we, I think we can do a little bit better this year. With everybody coming back, that just helps us more, and we really don't have to start from uh, from from day one. You know, we can kind of hit the ground running because we already pretty much know what we're trying to do. Last year, the people that were part of that special year, you, know, you always want some more. Our philosophy is go hard or go home. I think starting off the way we did at Millersville was huge because we were able to go ahead and get a big win on the road against a good team who I don't know if we've ever beaten them up there before. I know there's been some painful games up there that I can remember in the time I've been at Shepherd and you know it was it was tough to play up there. A shutout against Shippensburg. I, I don't know that we could have started the season much better than that because we proved we could win. Uh, not only we could win, but we could win big games on the road to start the season. And then the, the kind of having CW Post come down, and uh, I can remember uh, after winning that football game, and in that environment where we had a great crowd support, the campus, the community, everybody was involved with Shepherd football that day, and to win that game so soundly on both sides of the football and the special teams. I remember going home, my wife's telling me, hey, we got to do this, we got to do this. I said, we don't have to do anything. I'm going to go home and party. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy that one. The, the Glenville game had to be huge because in that particular game, you knew they were going to have a good ball club. It was going to be at a time when uh, you know they felt like they had a chance to win it. Irvine Wallace off the left side. Sheds a tackle in the backfield. Breaks a tackle at the 45. There he goes. The 30, to the 20, to the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. Fourth and inches, up under center Williams. He'll take that snap, he'll turn, he'll give the pitch. Joe Martino trying to turn the corner, runs into Lewis Club, who makes the tackle at the one yard line. And Glenville State is denied. The ball's off the right side of the line, steps through a tackle at the five into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. Oh, line, definitely. Um, I always give them praise every week, week in, week out, and I'll continue to do the same thing. You know, it seems to be working. They, uh, they uh, definitely block well. You know, they have a great defense. You know, we tried to explain to our guys how good that defense was going to be, how quick they were, and how they swarmed to the football. We were able to break a couple things. Defensively, that's what I had to be happy about, and Coach Haley and his staff got to feel real good about it because they did just a super job by answering the bell time and time again. We get a big shutout, and it's nothing to nothing at the end of three quarters down at, uh, at Charleston. It's huge. you got to find a way to get that one done, too, and another one that's, that's on the road. Eisner takes that snap, looks to run a middle screen. It's tipped and intercepted. Dan Peters picks it up at the 19, heads downfield inside the 5 and into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. I think the way we've played on the road these last couple of years probably has said as much, as much about our football team as you could because you have to play better. You know, you have to find ways that are going to get you a chance to get that tough W when you're not going to be in those friendly confines of Ram Stadium. And uh, we had good parental support. People followed us. There were games, I think, uh, maybe down at West Virginia State, seemed like we had more people in the stands than they did getting wet on that day. Liberty had a good game plan on us. I was afraid of death going into that game that, you know, well, we'd played eight games and given up 13 points. What happens when the other team scores once? You know, I, I was afraid of that. And when they did, they got the first touchdown, I heard Andre saying, well, at least they're going to play with us today. We're down at halftime. We had to find a way to get a win. And uh, Todd Edmondson gives a great halftime speech, much better than any that I can. I think selfishly maybe the offense felt like they were able to go ahead and, and have a big day on a day when we needed to have them do that. Um, but that again tells you a little bit about those that chemistry that gets you through those tough games where you've got to find a way to get it done at the end. And, and uh, 
This year, I think it was one of those situations where they're just, it seemed to be the last team that had the ball was going to go ahead and get a win. Blocking set up, bounces off the tackle at the five, stays on his feet to the four, to the three, dives for the pylon, he's in! A Shepherd University Ram touchdown, what a run! But we had big special teams plays that day. We, we got interceptions in the end zone that stopped plays. And I thought that our football team rose to the occasion. I mean, that two-point stop there at the end, you know, that was out. That was fantastic. They'll throw him that wide receiver screen. The Rams string it out, and they force him out of bounds with the two-yard line. The two-point conversion fails. When the going got tough, and when we weren't successful in one phase of the game, you saw that everybody sticking together. Nobody, there was no rats getting off that sinking ship. Everybody was sticking together. We bailed out the water and we ended up winning and staying afloat. It's impossible to shut six people out in a year. This is college football, you know. To me it is. To me in my mind. Not to our kids. There was a change of hands, uh, and it was late, and we're beating somebody pretty good. They got the ball inside the tent. I couldn't stop the first guys from getting back out. They weren't going to let them get in. They ran onto the field, I, you know, and I'm not grabbing Nick. He dragged me with him. So they went out, and they said, we're going to stop them, and that's what they did. They, this, this really is a different group. Welcome back to the NCAA Division II Football National Championship Selection Special. Dari Noka, joined by our coach Jim Donnan. We've shown you 12 teams that will try to win that national title. Time now to show you the final 12 in the field of 24. And we start with a one seed in the Northeast bracket, Shepard, out of Shepherdstown, West Virginia. The Rams do it with defense. They have posted shutouts in six of their 10 games this season. They allow 5.7 points a game overall. Monty Cater's team has won 28 consecutive regular season games. You know, I think Monty Cater's always done a good job up there. Their defense is outstanding, allowing less than five points a game. Uh, that's great. My family's calling me from Illinois and, and Wisconsin, and, uh, you know, it's great they have a chance to see those kinds of things. And, you know, it's just great to hear Shepard's name out there. Even after all these years of, of coaching, uh, that's still pretty special. The Merrimack game was huge because it gave uh, our conference, as well as Shepard, its first home playoff division to win. Colin Temple under center has Young behind him, fakes the handoff, Temple rolling far side, under pressure from Spiegelberg, lets it go, intercepted at the 22-yard line by Lewis Coram. Coram inside the 10, inside the 5, into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown, third INT, thrown this afternoon by Colin Temple, this one picked off by Lewis Coram, who returns it 22 yards for a score. You know, I think you play those playoff games, you play those a lot for the conference as well as Shepard. Uh, you know, certainly want to carry our own banner, but, you know, we want people to have a lot of respect for our league, too. They fake the handoff to him. Lazier rolling near side. Going to keep the football. He now stops, throws into the back of the end zone. Mark Springer is wide open. He pulls it in. Shepard filling up the box. There is the quick snap. The handoff. He didn't it. No, he didn't. He got stuffed at the two yard line. He's actually going to lose. He's going to lose two yards. 
We cherish the moment right here, but after we leave this field, go back to the drawing board. Let's get ready for that next opponent. High backfield behind the quarterback, Lazier. He's back to throw. Let's it go. A fade pattern into the back of the end zone. Catch is made. It's a Shepherd University Ram touchdown. You know, you would like to say there's a team from the West Virginia Conference can be in that Final Four, and they can be in the semifinal game and be on TV and stuff like that. I knew our kids would play well. Von Wallace coming near side inside the 40. Cuts back inside the 30. Angling far side of the field to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for the touchdown. The action to Brittingham. Fires intended for the tight end intercepted. Dan Peters throws over the middle, and it's incomplete, or is it intercepted? And a diving grab is made by the Rams' Dan Peters to go over the middle. Overthrown and intercepted. Dan Peters picks it off at the 25. The handoff goes to Brittingham. Off the left of the line, he steps into the end zone for the Bloomsburg touchdown. Bloomsburg will come on to the field to celebrate. Look at Dan Peters at the 31-yard line to our left. Just down on hands and knees, his helmet down on the ground, and his head in his hands. Just cannot believe that this remarkable run by this Rams football team both last year and this year has ended in this way. I got four of them might be the best that ever played here. That is, one, is probably one of the guys that I think is the best that's ever played his position at this university. He's a force. And Nick, you know, it got to the point where I didn't have to coach. Nick, you'd see him out on there on a Saturday afternoon, signaling me, coach, that's not going to work. So. Probably as good a, a three technique as ever played here, if not the best. Coach Haley, uh, <laughs> uh, last or what was it? My second, my second year here. He, I, I couldn't. I don't bend my hips too well when I'm tackling, and he called me a fat duck. <clears throat> so, you know, I shrugged it off. I, I take that, take it in stride. So, but after that, he it was turned turned out to be my nickname for four years. It's pretty funny. Fat duck. Fat duck. Great player, great player. Best inside linebacker as I've been here, I guarantee you, if not the best here. You know, he's a four or five, five guy running, 240 pounds, uh, very aggressive downfield, smart, knows what to do. Todd's quiet, and that, that's a kid you didn't have to motivate. He came to play day in, day out. So Todd just came to play every day. In the history of, of football, no one has led the nation in interceptions two years in a row. Dan Peters did. Latour under center again, the eye backfield. Play action to Brittingham. Fires intended for the tight end intercepted. Dan Peters across the 30 with a block across the 40 to the midfield stripe. Into Bloomsburg territory and grab from behind at the 39-yard line. Dan Peters read it all the way as they try to get the pass to Luke Cutlick, the tight end. Peters steps in front and picks off his 12th pass of the season. He's got instincts. Dan Peters coming up the near side of the field. Can he go all the way? And the uh, plays he made. And now lets it go as Lewis Corum drills him, and Dan Peters picks it off. And the things he did, just unbelievable. 35 and brought down at the 31-yard line. It's not just the interceptions. You're going to see how many plays he knocked down, how many runs. He just read everything so well. Two-time All-American, what can you say about the kid?
got a good story about Dan. He just left a, a note on my board. Coach Callman, number three in the playbook, number one in the heart, and he signed it, love, idiot child. Because we went two years, and I guarantee you that was his name. Uh, just the way he said it, I, I just think everyone, you know, I was, a, I was a freshman, you know, I didn't, I was 18 years old, I didn't know, you know, too much about life or, you know, anything about, you know, playing football at the college level, and he got me, he got me pretty good with the idiot child, so I, I think I went just stuck, and there are a lot of people, we always joke around about it, and I'm glad I, you know, have a good relationship with Coach Haley now, where he, he still jokes about it, and we can joke about it, so it was, that was probably my most memorable one, and I think that one stuck with me. O'Brien out of the shotgun, looking to throw, has it picked off near side, it's Dan Peters. Peters cutting across the field, angling far side, may go all the way. He's to the 20, he's to the 10, and he's into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. Dan Peters. And that's my fourth guy, Andre Henderson. Played the five technique, which is a weak side defense in. Never did he ever not work as hard as he could. Last couple of years, just unbelievable. I, I just broke down the Shippensburg game from last year. He manhandled it. And, uh, wow. You realize he still, I think, has the school record for interception for a touchdown. He's a defensive end. So that's mine on him, I, you know. Heck of a player. If one day Coach Haley comes to practice, he tells us he's putting a new defense in. So we say, all right, he tells us that it took him like three hours in, while he was in the tub taking a shower to come up with the defense. And he's like, I wonder how long it's going to take me to teach it to these guys. He thought it was going to take him at least, you know what I'm saying, to have a walk through time. He taught it to us in three minutes. We understood it in three minutes. He wasn't that complicated. He made it more complicated for himself. So, <laughs> but uh, Coach Eddie, uh, he's a cool guy, man. I'm missing him a lot. Terrence Jenkins. He has played in 32 games. He started left corner 32 games. We won 29. I mean, that's a stat that's unreal. Great player. He's great things for us. You know, he's just he's a winner. Bobby Jarvis. Uh, my stat on Bobby, Bobby, three-year captain. Three-year captain. Uh, so you know the players like him. Always where he's supposed to be at the right time. Did everything he had to do and, and did a great job. And the year he didn't play, 2003, four and six. You see, he got better from the broken ankle. He broke his ankle that year. We got 28 straight regular season wins in a row. Hired Ward and had knee operations and came back to play nose guard again this year. And uh, he, he did a fine job. And my story on him, the worst thing happened, we played Glenville. He got a safety. He sacked the quarterback for a safety. They gave it to Nick. So I had to, uh, uh, on this, we're going to get that clarified. Hired, we know you did it. Dante McCoy would start for anybody in our league. I promise you, he would start for anybody in our league and be one of their best players. He's got Todd Edmondson and Lewis Corn. Cameron Mason. Well, yeah, I would have loved to have him back. He uh, he was the third corner and would alternate in with uh, Io and uh, Terrence Jenkins. And the two games they were hurt, Cameron played, you know, started playing the whole game. We, we didn't miss a lot. And the same with Terrence who was out of game and, and uh, he played there. And then he was basically our 
next safety. You know, a guy, if we got into a pinch, we'd have to put him in, if, if something would happen to Dan. This was a heck of a group. I miss them. I miss them because they're fun to be with. They were fun to, to have on your team and, and uh, did what you told them and, and worked hard at everything they did. Dan Chabowski, um, two-year starter, three-year starter at quarterback. Uh, really the glue to the whole offense. He kept everything clicking. Uh, he was a great leader. A lot of people don't realize that he played the year with the herniated disc. Uh, and I think a lot of the players found strength with his leadership. He wants to throw, lets it go, has an open receiver back of the end zone, making the grab, Craig Trimble to Shepard University, Ram touchdown. There was a lot of times during practice that he would labor to take a snap and make a handoff to a back. Some of the simple things that uh, you know, most athletes or most football players would be able to do. Um, he really labored and you could see the pain in his face and he would never share that with anybody. And uh, had you not known about the injury, you thought he was just hobbling around and you know, wasn't doing things necessary, but he would he'd fight through it and he was the kind of kid that you would have had to drag off the field. things that he did for our program were outstanding. Rodney Jackson, um, fifth year player for us, probably uh, our big play receiver. Here comes the blitz, has some time, throws it deep down the far side of the field, the catch is made at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone, it's a Shepherd University Ram touchdown, Rodney Jackson pulls it in. wide receiver is Anthony Thomas. Anthony st really stepped up when Rodney had gotten hurt. Um, did a lot of positive things, made some plays for us in, in the passing game and uh, real proud of his efforts over the five years he was with us. Anthony was a great role player for us and um, really you know, was a guy that we could count on there throughout the season. Let's see, John Hinton. Uh, John Hinton was a senior fullback for us. Uh, he was uh, the battering ram, you know, and he was always at the point of attack in a run game, it seemed, so he really took a lot of, uh, he had a lot of weight on his shoulders as he was either lead blocking or cutting off, and, and he had to learn a lot, he had to study the game a lot, and he, he would have to know the pass game, the run game. Uh, John is one of those guys that, you, he's like your dog, you could kick him and he'd come running back to you, and, and he's loyal to the end. He's, and, uh, that's what made him a very effective football player for us. His loyalty and his just ability to work hard and, and work through adversity. Hinton with the catch at the one yard line, steps into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. The fullback doesn't get the ball a lot in this offense, but when he does, it's usually off of a pass play for John Hinton. He pulls it in, it's a six yard score. Clayton Beard is uh, probably one of those great success stories where you, you talk about a guy that came here five years ago and um, you know walked on and uh, really recruited us. So you know and looked at him you know of course you know we visited, visited Coach Cater visited with him and invited him to be part of the program and um, he was here he's, he was another fifth year senior actually one of our first graduate students uh, to play. And Clayton wasn't very tall. He, he was he was stronger than probably people would perceive him to be. Didn't run very fast, but he was one of the most effective players because he knew how to play the game. He knew he understood football, and he was another great leader that I think our kids rallied around. So I think that was a 
great thing, and I truly miss Clayton right now, <laughs> and I'm going to miss him. Uh, you know, he's, he was fun to coach, and he was really like having a coach on the field. Guy who uh, both to had both jobs as a kicker and place kicker and punter, and was very effective in, in that position. We knew that he had a really strong leg, and that our chances of making field goals were greater than a lot of kickers that we've had here in the past. Even though we have had some very good kickers, uh, Ricky was a definite weapon offensively for us, and he was a great defensive weapon as well. He could he could change the field position throughout the game and keep the other, other team's offenses pinned down. And then when you factor that in with our great defense and a weapon like Ricky, you know, our field position, we were always in the positive side, it seemed, in the field position. And uh, we're, sore, we're really gonna miss that guy because of all the things that he could do. And uh, whoever does follow him is gonna have some tough shoes to fill because of his ability as a, as a player and, um, and it, just a, what a great kid too. I think the team really accepted as a football player, and uh, but he he's going to be sorely missed. Brian Wright, um, Brian transferred here from West Virginia University. Uh, having him and Dervon in the backfield together really gave us a very effective running game. Uh, Brian was very physical; was just the type of player who um, did things to get him the, the the ball in the pass game. So we, we, we had two very effective tailbacks uh, on the field and probably had one of two, some big touchdown runs in our opener, get, us, get the ball rolling offensively. Five and into the end zone for the Shepherd University Ram touchdown. They will hand it off to Brian Wright, gets an opening up the middle of the field, and there he goes into the territory. He turns on it after runners to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, five, into the end zone. It's a Shepherd University Ram touchdown. Has the longest run in school history. Brian hit it right where it's supposed to be hit. My fondest memory is just being in the locker room with all the guys before the game, just knowing the guy next to you is about to go to war for you, going out there, putting on the jersey every Saturday. That's what we work hard for every day of the year, training almost every day, running and lifting, but it's all worth it on Saturdays. I'm going to miss the whole atmosphere, like the excitement, uh, just building up the game week, and you know, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm even going to miss the winners, uh, workouts early in the morning, just you know, being around the team, just that excitement is something that I'm, I'll never probably forget. You know, you don't usually get to have the best time of your life, you know, with right. you know some of your best friends. So, you know, it was just great how everyone, you know, we all have each other's backs, and you know, it was just great. Like everyone just you know, has a good time, but we still got the win. The time that I was here, it was really like having a second family. I really enjoyed being around every player that was here, every coach that was here. You know, man, we had our differences, but it always come out for the best. I'm just gonna miss football at Shepherd all around. I've never been around a group of players and a group of people, even coaches that, I mean, besides the football thing that liked one another and would do anything for someone, I mean, you could ask anybody on this team out of all 80, 90 of us, and going down to that last one, they would do whatever, whatever you needed to do, and it, you can't take away friendship like that, and it's going, it's going to stick with That was the one thing that I'm never going to take away. I mean, the football success we've had was great, and obviously tremendous for me and, and all of us, but the friendship I made with, with coaches and, and players is, is un, undescribable. Everybody, everybody got along. It was just a blast. I mean, I can't really say it any better. <laughs>